Hello everybody and welcome to our Facebook Live Compost Workshop Series number four. My name is Catherine, the Facilities and Sustainability Manager here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. Thank you so much for joining me um, on this beautiful Sunday. Uh, quite hot out today actually. Um, I'm joined today by Educator Ashley. She's my camera woman today. So remember if you have any questions or comments on anything that we go over today or maybe some things that we've gone over last week please let us know in the comment section and I'll be able to answer it during this live video. So today's focus of our composting workshop today is composting methods that require very, very little maintenance um, or labor. So we'll be reviewing how to compost in um, a bucket in the ground or just digging a hole. I call it lazy man compost. And we'll also go over a method called bokashi, which is a food storage method um, that is a little different than all of the other types of composting that I've actually been talking about already in this series, but still a great option, especially for those who don't have a backyard as well. So we'll be going over that today. And we'll also check out our compost pile that we started on week one, just to see where it's at and go over some tips and tricks on how to uh, maintain your compost pile. So let's start um, talking about composting uh, in a bucket in the ground. This is a very passive method. So you can take a five gallon bucket like this. Um, we've pre-drilled our holes. So we have some on the bottom as well as the sides and the tops just for some aeration. You can even uh, take an old bucket and cut the whole bottom off so the whole bottom is open and you can place that in the ground, which we'll demonstrate later. But let me just tell you what can go into these buckets. So if you remember, maybe on week one or two, um, we talked about the greens, the browns, and the blues, right? Um, greens were nitrogen-rich products, things that were very wet, things like fruit and veggie scraps. The browns were dry material like dry leaves, um, paper towels, paper, twigs, stuff like that. And blues were air and water. So in the composting methods where the bin sits on the ground, or maybe it's the tumbler method, we mixed the greens and the browns and the blues, and we made sure there was proper aeration um, for those materials. In the passive composting method here, or my lazy man compost, we're putting just greens, okay? This requires no mixing of material as well. So basically you throw it in the bucket, you walk away, and you let the FBI of the ground do the composting. If you don't remember, the FBI stands for fungus, bacteria, and invertebrates. So you throw it in the bucket, you walk away, a few weeks go by, you can add more food material to the bucket and the material inside starts to decompose or compost. And what it does within the bucket and around the bucket, um, material decomposes and amends the soil right where it is. So all the other methods that we've been talking about um, so far have been turning piles, the soil amendment, sift it out, and apply it to your garden. This method, with a bucket in the ground, fixes the soil right where, uh, right where this bucket is, so you don't have to move that soil somewhere else. Okay? This is ideal, too, if you have things like fruit trees that maybe aren't doing so well, they need a little bit of extra fertilizer. You can place a bucket near that fruit tree under its canopy, the edge, so that's where the roots, um, uh, that's where the roots are growing towards. Place that bucket there and boom, you have an instant fertilizer for your fruit tree. If you have a uh, hard clay uh, dirt in your backyard and you find that it's very, very hard to dig, so say you're preparing to plant a, a tree, you can prep that area with your bucket let it compost, let the food waste compost in that bucket for a few months prior, and then you have nice, rich, fertile soil um, to, to dig up, and then of course, plant your tree. OK, 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take a walk over to our area that we prepared for our Lazy Man compost bucket. Ashley, do we have any questions so far? No questions All so right. far. So we're gonna come over this way. Follow me. <clears throat> All right. So we did a little prep work for the sake of time, of course, but as you can see here, we've dug a little over, you know, maybe a two foot hole or so. You wanna make sure that your bucket gets either flush or at least pretty flush to the ground. Um, if you have very hard packed clay, what I suggest doing is um, dig up a little at a time, take a hose, let it soak, wait 30 minutes to an hour, and then come back to your bucket. So what I'll do is I'll move a little bit <clears throat> of this material back in here. Okay. You, of course, would be doing this for both sides. <clears throat> oh, no. Okay. But your kitchen... Uh, compost bin container is getting full or maybe it's stinky and there's some flies coming walk out to your bin simply dump it I am going to pull out the napkins though <clears throat> some dust in my throat <laughs> and I also have some passion fruit that I'm going to add in just like that. That's all you need to do. I'm not adding any brown. I'm not turning the bin. If you would like, I suggest maybe taking one handful of soil, one or two, just like this. Jump start those FBI members, and that's it. We'll leave a lid on top with some air holes, uh, just because if I don't, um, if I don't do this, we'll have squirrels and rats coming into the bin. Now Richard asks, would you keep the lids on these? Yes, I would definitely keep the lid on this, especially if you have dogs or animals in, in your backyard. Um, we just don't want to attract, we don't want to attract them and have pests uh, near our homes. But uh, having a lid like this, it doesn't even have to be a, a airtight seal at all. It could just be a simple lid like this or put a rock on top of it, a piece of wood, just to de uh, deter any critters. We have some other ones here, like I, I can't really get to it right now, it's a little bit overgrown. But you can put multiple ones of these um, <clears throat> in your backyard, hide them under bushes, kind of how we're doing here. This one's hidden so it's not um, in plain sight. But it is a great fertilizer source. Cat Judy wants to know, is it okay to add green material to the buried bucket over time, or do you forget about it once it's already full? <clears throat> so you fill it up all at once and leave it alone. Okay. Uh, yes, that's one way you can do it. Um, fill it up. Give it uh, three to six months time to break down. Maybe have another bucket that you can start filling. Um, but basically, Lazy Man Compost takes a lot longer than any of our other methods. So, with our soil saver bin that we started over here, right, greens, browns, mixing it, aerating it, putting a lot more labor in it, two to four months, we'll have some good finished compost. Lazy Man Compost in the bucket, <clears throat> anywhere between four to six months. Um, but yeah, once it's full, you're going to want to just let it decompose, give it, uh, give it time uh, for the FBI to break down that material, and then you can then pick up that bucket, whatever's left in there, you can dump it uh, back into the hole, mix it up, and then that area is ready to go. Um, and then you can move that bucket to a new area in your backyard space and start fixing that soil. Are there any other questions on our Lazy Man compost? Okay, so while we are over here, let's just take a quick look at the status of our first week's pile. So keep in mind, I made it on week one, let it sit for week two, 
And last week for week three, I turned this pile over and I added more greens. So we're back at about 100 degrees again, but last week I had it full up to here. So you can see it's already shrunken down at least about halfway. Um, and what I'm actually gonna do, Ashley, if you can wait just a second, I'm gonna grab a glove so we can see what it looks like down uh, deeper in the pile. So I'm gonna show you a way to add your new greens, stuff from your kitchen waste bin without having to turn the whole thing because it's very hot today and I do not want to turn it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of reach in here to the center. Oh, and let's see here. We have some mold starting to form on some of our items here, our fungus. All right, so I'm going to move the material aside so I get towards the center of the pile where most of the heat is. Add my ingredients, my new stuff and then kind of just cover it back up. Just like that. Fix my straw, my dry browns, and then there I go. A few days later, your bin's full again. I would reach over here kind of to the left, make a little hole and add the material. Um, but that is the best way to keep adding so you don't have a, a large stockpile of greens piling up uh, so it doesn't get too stinky. Remember too, if you have problems with flies, um, always put the dry browns on top or if you're storing your food waste, remember you can freeze them. You can freeze these items so they don't get so stinky. Okay, so we're gonna come back to our table. Oh, actually, thank you for the cue, Ashley. <laughs> So I was talking about Bokashi. So this is the Bokashi brand that I'm actually making. I'm in the process of making. So this is um, <clears throat> spent grains from the beer making process. Um, it's gone through about four weeks of fermentation in a bag and I'm letting it out now to dry, uh, to dry out uh, because we want it to be a little bit more of like this consistency over here a little bit drier. And this is the brand <clears throat> that we put on our food waste to help ferment it. So that's what Bokashi is. So that's just a quick peek of how we're making it here. Um, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about what Bokashi actually is. So all the other methods that we've been talking about so far have been what we call aerobic composting practices. Aero aerobic meaning they require oxygen. Why do we turn a tumbler? Why do we turn a pile with a pitchfork, right? We want to provide all this oxygen for bacteria to become active and break down that material. Now, Bokashi on the other hand is a anaerobic process. It requires no oxygen, and we actually want to keep oxygen out of our buckets. Um, this is a fermentation process instead of a decomposition process. So that means the food scraps that you put in the bin don't break down and look like soil like they do in all these other bins. They actually stay exactly the same. So like if you were to put a banana peel in your Bokashi bucket, and you spread the bran, in about four weeks when you open up that bin, it still looks like a banana peel. It hasn't started to get mushy or the material itself hasn't been able to break down yet. So that's the big difference. Um, the other differences are, of course, it's in an airtight container as opposed to all the other methods where you want it to breathe and have oxygen. Um, you, can, you also want to actually do this indoors or in uh, shaded, cool areas. Um, as opposed to composting outdoors. Um, <clears throat> the material that you make with Bokashi, though, is a pre-compost, meaning 
it gets stored in the bucket, then you either have to A, bury it in the ground somewhere. Sorry, <laughs> let's fix that there. Bury it in the ground or put it in another type of composting setting like the bin that sits on the ground, the soil saver, or the tumbler. So just keep in mind that this adds on a lot of uh, a lot more time to the breakdown of that food, but it is a method that a lot of people like because it requires less labor. So as long as you're patient, you have time to wait for your finished compost amendment, then this might be a better option for you. The odor associated with Bokashi um, composting is minuscule to very little. Uh, it often smells like something very acidic, like a pickling. Um, it doesn't smell like rotting food necessarily. And the labor required for this is, well, first of all, how long does it take your family to fill up a bucket like this, right? Some people, they might fill this up in a few days to a week. Some people who maybe live by themselves may take up to a month to fill this up. So the time that it takes to compost basically depends on once this is full, then you're going to let it sit in this bucket for another three to four weeks, and then you're going to place it in the ground into a composting bin, and that might take another four to six weeks. So in total, we're getting closer to two to three months for this process. Okay. So, you can purchase the Bokashi brand, the one that Ashley showed you over there, um, online, uh, pre-made. Definitely, I would suggest doing that when you're starting out. <clears throat> and then as you get uh, used to this Bokashi composting method, you can then make your own brand. Um, there's a lot of different recipes online. Ooh. <laughs> um, but you want to definitely get uh, molasses, on sulfured molasses, and this one here, EM1 microbial, microbial inoculant, compost activated. So you might see this, um, this product getting mentioned that you need this for composting, like all the other methods I showed you. But you don't really need it, as you saw in the tumblers and the lazy man compost today, all I did was actually put a handful of dirt to put all the uh, microorganisms into the compost pile. But for this process, because we're making this special brand to then add later, we do need to add a, a, um, some microorganisms and not just soil. So these I purchased off Amazon, um, and I've also purchased molasses from like Sprouts or any grocery store, they definitely have that. Um, I don't have any spent grain to show you today, um, but I would put about six to ten cups of grain in a Ziploc bucket or a Ziploc bag or a, even a bucket if I'm doing a bigger batch. And then I'd add about a fourth of a cup of molasses and then a couple teaspoons of the EM1 inoculant into the bag, mix it up, and then I'd actually um, seal this bag up and leave it for about two to three weeks. And then after two to three weeks, what you saw on the blue tarp behind me is the drying process. Once it dries out, you then get something that looks more like this. Is that a good angle? Okay. So what you're gonna do actually is you take your food waste and you do maybe about three inch um, layer of food. Let's put a little bit of Bokashi 2 on the bottom. I forgot. Okay. Sprinkle that Bokashi brand on there and then take your food scraps. Oh, and I forgot to mention Bokashi can take all kinds of food scraps even meat and dairy products. That is one of the other reasons why a lot of people are starting a Bokashi compost. Okay, so I put the food in there. I'm gonna sprinkle my bran. If I am putting meat and dairy, I would put more bran on that. I'm also gonna press it down so there's no air pockets. We don't want oxygen, okay? 
I'll do another layer for you to see. So this food has kind of been sitting in the buckets for more than five days, so it's already starting to decompose a bit, but still gets the job done. This is all the animal care food prep for the sea turtles, the reptiles here. They eat a lot of produce, so we help reduce our carbon footprint here and our footprint that we send to the landfill by composting whatever we can here. Okay, so you would continue doing this maybe throughout the week. Uh, put a couple inch layers of food, sprinkle your bokashi, and at the very end, once this is completely full and everything's pressed down, you would want to make sure you have an airtight sealed, uh, airtight lid like this. You can purchase this online. I've seen it at Home Depot. But this is the best way to secure your lid and uh, um, keep it airtight, okay? So once it's full, you seal it up and then you're going to leave it there for about four to six weeks and don't even think about opening the container. All right, what time are we at, Ashley? It is 2.23 and Vanessa has a question. Mm -hmm. It's not about Bokashi. Okay. She has a soil saver and um, has just finished adding stuff to it and wants to know how often she should be turning it and when the compost might be done. Okay, so how often should you turn a soil saver? Every five to seven days at, at the most. So if you're turning it once a week, you can expect to have some siftable compost in about a month, a month and a half, maybe even two months. Okay, and when I say siftable compost, that means there's some material that looks dark brown in color, smells earthy like soil, and you can't really tell what the material is anymore. Now you might still be able to see, oh, there's still some pieces of orange or leaves that still haven't broken down but you can definitely sift that out and uh, put it back in the pile. Now, for most households though, you're probably gonna turn your pile maybe one, more like once a month. And if you're turning it once a month, let's add on another, another month or two for finished compost. So in about four to six months, you would have finished siftable, usable compost. I hope that answered your question. Did I miss anything from that question, Ashley? I don't think so, I think okay. I got it all. Um, and then remember, tumblers should be turned every few days or every day, a couple of rotations to provide oxygen, uh, just because they are in um, containers that don't sit directly on the ground. Okay, any more questions? All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's composting workshop on very low maintenance, passive composting methods, as well as food storage, um, like Bokashi. Uh, Bokashi is the subject that I'm still also learning more about myself, so uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I will um, do my best to answer it. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you next week. Bye.